Okay, we'll start. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. May the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and forever into the age of all ages, amen. Welcome back, everyone. We missed you. Uh, today is the fourth Sunday of the blessed month of Tooth. Um, and as we have been saying, this month is focused on the heart, basically. It's focused on God's love for us and our response uh, of love for God, which usually takes the form of repentance or it acts from repentance. So today we read of the gospel um, of the repentant woman who went to the feet from behind the Lord um, and she washed his feet with her tears, wiped them with the hair of her head, anointed uh, them with oil. Uh, and it's found in the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 7. Probably you are familiar with this gospel because every night we uh, have it in the book of hours, the Agbeya in the second watch of the midnight hour. Um, and then every month uh, for Vespers of the 29th day of the blessed month, uh, any blessed, almost every blessed month, um, we read this gospel. And then every year, not only on this Sunday, but the eve of Holy or Covenant Thursday, right before Good Friday, um, we read all of the Gospels that have this contrast. And there's some differences, but in, uh, in the Gospel, there's also the story of Beth Mary of Bethany, who did almost the same thing, and the Lord spoke of her. And instead of uh, Simon the Pharisee criticizing her, it was uh, Judas. Um, <clears throat> so um, the end of the Gospel of today um, as well as the end of last Sunday's gospel, if you remember, is pretty much the same. We didn't necessarily read last Sunday's gospel, if you remember, because it was the Feast of the Cross, but we not spoke of the third Sunday gospel as well and tied it in with the cross of Zacchaeus, when at the end, what did the Lord say to Zacchaeus? Today, salvation has come to this house, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And today at the end of the gospel, uh, according to St. Luke chapter 7, I think it's verse 50, um, the Lord has said, your faith has saved you, go in peace. So here's the salvation of those who love the Lord um, and those who repented wholeheartedly. And so most of the time in the story, we focus on the repentant woman and what she did and repentance. Um, but because this month is focused on, like I said, the, the love of the sinner towards the Savior and vice versa, um, we, uh, we can get to repentance through recognizing the love of God. Um, <clears throat> and more specifically, there's a contrast, a very clear contrast between the one who criticized and the one who didn't love much and the one who loved much right? Um, and sometimes God places in our lives those who loved much to rebuke us or to get us to repent so we can love more, right? So, and this is what happened with Simeon, uh, the, the Pharisee, uh, because he, he uh, criticized. He didn't have uh, the right heart or the right um, mindset. He judged her, he criticized her, um, and then he even did the same to the Lord himself, um, he didn't offer, he said, this man, if, if he were truly the son of God, or even less than son of God, if he were just a prophet, um, he would know that she's a sinner and he wouldn't allow her to do this. That's basically what he's saying, um, to touch him. Um, but then the Lord spoke to him and said, hold on a second. Don't look at what I'm doing and why I'm doing and criticizing me or criticizing, criticizing her. But what, what have you done? In the story, you didn't give me water. You didn't give me a kiss. You didn't anoint my head. Um, you're not going to get much forgiveness or any for that matter. Um, so uh, in this reminds us in our relationship. So it, we're not, we're in our relationship with God, if it's not strong and good, and um, uh, if it's lacking love, then it will also spill over to our other relationships. So because this man was not loving God in the right way. Um, it affected the way he perceived the woman and even the way he perceived God. Um, <clears throat> and what led him along this road? I'm sure he grew up to be maybe a good Pharisee in the beginning 
just like Judas in the beginning at one point was a good disciple. If he weren't, the Lord probably wouldn't have called him. Um, but so what are some things that prevent us from having the same end as, as the, them? What are some obstacles or weaknesses that we have to purge from within us um, to prevent us from becoming like Judas or, or the Pharisee? Um, <clears throat> so here are just three points. Um, he had a distracted mind. It wasn't focused on the, the love of God. He was disorderly in his actions um, and his desires. And eventually he, he had a, a, a dry heart. Um, and similarly, in, in our life, um, if we don't look at Christ, if we look at around us, if we look at the speck in others, um, eyes instead of the log in our own eyes, um, then we have a, a distracted mind. If we focus on the things of the flesh, the things of the body, like money or clothing or possessions or reputation or our SAT school or, or score or, or what career this person is and that person is, God, God sees through all that. We, we need um, to do as well. well. At the same time, we have to keep ourselves pure and we, we don't judge others based on those things. Um, but we try to love them with the love of God, regardless of what the world says about them. But we have to be careful that it doesn't affect our, our, ourselves. Um, so so um, uh, what can we do? So when we compare, again, the one whose mind was distracted versus the one whose wasn't, um, it helps us in our growing in love for, for God and one another. Um, and I know I've mentioned this verse before, but in uh, the book of Philippians, at the end of the, the last chapter, St. Paul talks about putting your mind on Christ, um, putting your minds on the things that are above, directing our, our thoughts to the Lord. Um, and uh, nowadays, people are focused on worldly things, on politics, on the virus, on the finances, on grudges, on what, what their anxieties might be. Whatever prevents us from thinking of good things. But St. Paul says, no, think about everything that is good. Because when you do so, you'll come to Christ. He says, whatever things are true, noble, just, pure, lovely, anything good. If there's any virtue in any of those things, if anything worth praise, Put your mind on them. Meditate, contemplate on these things. So we have the word of God to do this. We have the scriptures. Uh, we have the prayers of the church. Um, even nature, like the, even the fathers were saying, those who don't have the scripture, they just look around and they find God. Why? Because he created all of the, these things that are good. So this helps us um, not to have this distracted type of mind. Um, and in our prayers, sometimes... We're distracted. Even in the liturgy, sometimes, uh, I myself included, we can get distracted. Um, so the fathers teach us that good prayer and good spiritual life needs good preparation. I know I've said this before, but many can't focus when it comes to prayer um, or, um, or they get distracted even when they read scripture. Um, so like uh, the scholar Origen says, prepare yourself. He says the person who's about to come to prayer should withdraw for a little prepare themselves. We can't just jump into prayer when we're doing something else. It, it's hard to redirect our minds. And sometimes by the time they're re redirected, we, we stop. <laughs> um, so he says, what should that person do? Cast away all temptation and troubling thoughts. Erase everything in your mind and remind yourself as far as you're able of the majesty whom he approaches. Um, <clears throat> so like, just the thought of the glory of God or the throne of God or the majesty of God himself and being in his presence helps prepare our thoughts for a, a good time with him. Um, and that's why he says, this is how he should come to prayer, stretching out his soul, as it were, instead of his hands, straining his mind toward God instead of his eyes. Um, <clears throat> also, um, another good uh, reference for this, Theophan the Recluse um, has a lot of suggestions on the spiritual growth. Um, so I'll probably be referring to him quite a bit in, in this talk. But he says, <clears throat> um, morning and evening, immediately before you begin to repeat your prayers, stand a while, sit for a while, or walk a little, and try to steady your mind. 
So the mind has to be involved in our prayer or else we're just reciting words. Um, <clears throat> and then he says, after this, think who he is, to whom you turn in prayer, just like what Origen uh, wrote in the last slide. Um, then recollect who you are, remember who you are. So this, the repentant woman, she, she knew who she was. She knew her weaknesses. She knew her faults. Um, and and who, she also knew who Christ was and how great he was. So when we put this balance in our mind, in our heart, who I am, I'm nothing, right? God gave me everything. And what God has done for me, that's what links us to God and helps us live a life of repentance in a good way, not, not in a bad way. Um, so he says, do this in such a way as to awaken your heart a feeling of humility and reverent awe that you are standing in the presence of God. It is the beginning of prayer, and a good beginning is half the completed task. So um, make sure we try to understand what we're doing and to eliminate these distractions around us or within us so that we can benefit when we, when we come to God in prayer. Um, <clears throat> another thing we can do is to focus on the words. Um, and sometimes we kind of need to study them first before when we pray them, because then it has more impact uh, on us. So uh, again, as Khalifa uh, Reklu says, it's necessary to make the effort to concentrate the attention, concentrate the attention, even though one knows in advance that the thoughts will wander. So we, I know I'm going to wander when I pray, but I'm still going to try to focus and do my best. So uh, when the mind does wander, recall it. So it's kind of like you know a dog on its leash, bring it back, right? Um, and and he and a lot of the desert fathers say this. Okay, if you keep wandering in the same place you know, in, in the Psalms or whatever, repeat the part again <laughs> until you say it with feeling. I know some people who do this in their prayers and, and it works. They, get, they tell me they, they get very, very deep in their prayers because they will not um, finish the prayer until they, uh, it's kind of like Jacob who said, I will not leave you until I get a blessing. I'll not let you go. Um, so sometimes we have to struggle with ourselves in this way. Uh, to, to redirect our thoughts and um, to focus on God. And he, uh, Theophan was saying, if you overcome this difficulty, this might just be a small test in your spiritual life, and it might not even come again. And even if it does, it won't be as bad. Um, so that's why it's good to try to overcome this now so that you don't keep facing um, this problem in your spiritual life. Okay, the second part is discipline. And unfortunately, um, a lot of people ha have been um, telling me over the last few months, like with coronavirus, everyone was shocked in the beginning that, you know, the services wasn't the same and uh, so on and so forth. And, but then during the Lent or during the Passion Week, thank God a lot of people got serious and they, they grew. And uh, some people say this is one of the best, you know, years of my life in terms of Passion Week because we prayed together as a family, we focused on the readings, we, we participated more often than anything. But then they said after a few months, you know, things started to get dry again and we can't discipline ourselves as much as maybe just wake up and go to church every Sunday as, as we used to. So the, the struggle here is uh, we need to ask God to, to be able to discipline ourselves um, more or as much as we were in the past. As St. Paul says, but I discipline my body, bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So what does this discipline um, look like? Well, Pope Carlos, uh, the, the saint of blessed memory, um, who uh, was probably one of the most disciplined of our contemporary saints that we could think of, um, he says the same thing. Everything should have order and discipline. Like the Lord said, you know, um, or St. Paul says, let everything be done decently and in order. Um, he says, because our God is a God of order and discipline. That's why in the church there's structure. There, there is a discipline of how we pray in the church or even how we should try to pray uh, at home. Um, so he says, when we do this, there will be blessing and grace. God will give us blessing and grace. There should be discipline in your prayers. Pray softly. Um, stand while praying as long as you can. Um, 
pray a psalm or two, the gospel litanies. He says there's great rewards in following the discipline of the church when it comes um, to prayer. That doesn't mean you can't have your own personal spontaneous prayers, but the more you try to de develop, as the fathers call it, the, this canon or this order of things that you do in your spiritual growth, um, the more you will find God blessing you and giving you his grace, um, even within the prayer. <clears throat> so, um, so that's why we should try to have you know, the prayer at the same time every day, preferably in the morning. You know, um, don't give up even if you start and you stop again. Keep, keep at it until this good habit forms in you um, to make sure that you're reading the scriptures if you can every day. Um, and, and over the time, it will, it will, that part won't, of the struggle won't be there. The habit will be formed. Then comes the, the more serious work of after the habit is formed, had a benefit while you're doing what you are used to doing. Um, <clears throat> and that's what comes with persistence. Um, as St. Paul says, don't give up. Don't grow weary while doing good. Because um, some people, they don't see the results right away and they stop. Um, but he says, in due season, we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Um, so don't give up. If it's a struggle, um, it's supposed to be a struggle. We call it the spiritual struggle, the spiritual strife. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes it takes many years to get to a, a certain point. Um, but the important thing is not to give up. Um, and uh, this is what helps our heart um, soften, um, is the person who is diligent and, and um, doesn't give up and disciplined then the heart responds because yes, your heart might be soft in the beginning, but if, if there's no continuation in the spiritual life, you might not pray when you don't feel like it. And that's not <laughs> what, I don't think that's what God wants from us. Um, so St. Macarius the Great, he says, um, and a, a lot of the fathers, especially the desert fathers say, we have to push ourselves. We have to force ourselves sometimes. Um, he says, the man who desires to come to the Lord and to be found worthy of eternal life should force himself to every good work, force himself to do good, um, and to fulfilling the, all the commandments of the Lord because of sin that is present with him. Um, then he talks about prayer, force yourself to prayer when he has not spiritual prayer. Say, uh, my prayer is weak. Okay, just force yourself to continue in it. Um, how, how are you gonna, going to get to the next level if you stop when, when there's, um, it doesn't seem like it's going anywhere? Um, so he says, because God sees us pushing ourselves, um, he will give us the real prayer, right? So don't look at other people and say, oh, that person has real prayer. I don't, I'm just going to skip this part of my spiritual life. That doesn't work. <laughs> um, because when God sees our struggle, then he'll reward us for the real thing, with, with, with the better things, okay? Um, and who, who's the judge to say that your, your prayer is not good enough? As long as you're trying to connect with God, that's, that's the important thing. Um, <clears throat> so St. Ephraim the Syrian also says, whether you're in a church or in your house or in the country or guarding sheep or constructing bills or, or going to school, don't, don't stop praying. When you're able, bend your knees. When you can't, make intercession with your mind. Um, so here, this is the, um, what the, the desert fathers and mothers teach us is to try to always be in the, the practicing the presence of God. Um, and that, uh, that is a type of prayer in itself. Um, and then he says, if prayer precedes your work, and if when you rise from your bed, your first movements are accompanied by prayer, sin can, so we have a protection here from, um, from, from evil because our mind is stayed on God. Okay, um, we're almost done here. Again, a nice quote from Theophan the Rectus. He says, if you work hard here in, in your spiritual life, in your prayer life, you'll get what you ask. For, um, you get what you ask, sorry, the period is, shouldn't be there. You'll get what you ask for and will attain perfection in prayer. But without effort, you don't receive anything. And then he gives the example, rub two sticks together and you get fire. Force yourself to stand, bow and stay vigilant and you'll get fires of prayer. Um, one has to force oneself to do any good and even more so in prayer than the Lord when he sees our effort. It's the same, it's, it's the same message, but by different fathers, right? 
um, when the Lord sees our effort and zeal in wishing to attain perfection in prayer, he will send to us his grace and bless our spirit with a cloud of prayer. See how like Theophan the Reckless, um, uh, uh, St. Ephraim the Syrian, Origen, you know, uh, Pope Kyrillus, they're all basically uh, telling, so in every generation, they're telling us the same idea. Don't say, oh, that's the desert fathers, or that's for the monks, or that's for St. So-and-so, but now is different. No, it's the, it's the same formula that we need to grow. Ask the, the experts, and this is what they say. Um, so we'll try from where we are to get to the, to the next uh, level. Uh, so that God will send us his grace and bless our spirit with the cloud of prayer. And then he gives the example of like when Moses was on Mount Sinai, um, <clears throat> he was able to talk face to face with God um, uh, just by persisting uh, in, in, in his prayer and even wrestling a little bit um, with God. Uh, so um, kind of like just to summarize here, um, the Pharisee had distracted mind. He was looking all over, thinking about a lot of things, but the repentant woman, she had her uh, blinders set on the feet of Christ, on the word of God, on preparing herself for meeting him. She didn't come empty-handed, but she offered her tears. She offered her hair. She offered very sp expensive oil um, because she was ready to give anything and everything. And this is the heart that is aflame with love for um, the lover of mankind. Um, so our minds have to be not distracted. Our bodies have to be also disciplined as best as we can. Um, and it takes effort. It takes trial, sometimes, like I said, years. And then the, the heart kind of falls into place once we struggle with our thoughts and struggle with our actions. Um, uh, and this persistent is Persistence is what gives us the ability um, to love much because it comes from God and God rewards with grace those who struggle. Um, so what happened at the end of the, the road of the Pharisee? He was very judgmental and he, he was not accepted. He was, he, he was judged by the Lord. Um, what happened to the repentant woman who went on the right road? Um, she was very forgiving and she, she heard the word say, um, uh, just like um, what happened um, uh, to Zacchaeus, um, she heard, your faith has saved you, go in peace. <clears throat> um, and this is the road that the church is telling us that, that will save many. Um, and uh, we, we kind of um, conclude with the prayer that we have in the midnight hour um, in the litanies after the gospel that we just read. We say, give me, O Lord, many fountains of tears, as you gave in the past to the sinful woman. Make me worthy to wash your feet, which liberated me from the path of straying, and to offer to you a precious fragrant oil. And uh, th through repentance, uh, a pure life, it should be, and gain through repentance, sorry, a pure life, so that I may hear that voice full of joy, your faith has saved you. Um, so may the Lord grant us this faith, to grant us uh, these tears and to grant us the, the, the blessing of offering whatever we have and to hear his voice say, um, your faith has saved you, go in peace. Um, glory be to him now and forever and to the age of all ages. Amen. Um, any questions? Okay, if there aren't any, we'll just do some the basic announcements. Um, Nothing has changed much, thank God, yet. <laughs> um, but we still have the walk-in services on Wednesdays and Fridays and Saturday nights. Um, no registration required, but if you do want to attend a Divine Liturgy on Saturday or Sunday, um, sign up on the website or in the email that we send. Um, it, uh, we try to, like, if, if you sign up even before the month starts, we, we try to squeeze in two services, two weekend services for you. Um, so, you know, the early bird <laughs> gets the word basic, basically. Um, he who seeks me early will find me. Um, but uh, other than that, um, there's not too many uh, new things. Uh, we're going to take a break of, for just, uh, thank God Abuna finished um, his uh, 
a very deep Bible study on the book of uh, Peter um, this yesterday. And um, we're going to take a break for one week and then start a new series, God willing, um, on, uh, so we'll do probably Bible every other uh, series. And the, the off series, we, we do something a little um, different. So God willing, we'll do it on the creed, um, a faith for not just those who, who don't know, but to, uh, as a reminder, an in-depth study of what we believe and why it's, it's so important that we get a lot of these things um, uh, on point. Any questions or 